Uh, let's talk a little bit about similarities and how anti-evolutionists and anti-global warmingists approach promoting their views. A major technique discussed by or illustrated by Oreskes and Conway in their very good book, Merchants of Doubt, was used by the tobacco companies during the decades that public health organizations attempted to demonstrate that smoking caused cancer, addiction, heart disease, and other negative effects. And this, of course, is related to the first pillar, the claim that science is not yet settled on the issue. <clears throat> this is made explicit by a PR firm advising Republican congressional candidates. Should the public come to believe that the scientific issues are settled, their views about global warming will change accordingly. Therefore, you need to continue to make the lack of scientific certainty a primary issue in the debate. This is my emphasis. The contention is that since the science is not yet settled, there's no need to take action, much as the, anti, uh, much as the tobacco companies argued that we don't need warning labels on cigarettes because our scientists say that smoking is harmless. Now, the idea of, of um, questioning the science is often done through um, presenting a slate of scientists that support your point of view. And certainly the creationists have done this for decades. Uh, most recently, the Discovery Institute, which is a promoter of intelligent design creationism, came up with a petition of 100 scientists doubting Darwin. And of course, uh, this has increased over the years. It's now about 800. If you're interested in our response to this, just Google Project Steve and um, there's enough chuckles around the audience that some of you already know Project Steve, but anyway, this is silly. Um, similarly, the global warming, the anti-global warming uh, side also has its list of scientists doubting global warming. <clears throat> Arthur Robinson and his sons uh, run the Oregon Institute of Science and Medicine, OISM. And this petition that they've been circulating for several years has an impressive sounding 30,000 scientists on their list. Now, signatories need to have a bachelor's degree or higher. However, it's drawn from not just climate scientists, but a fairly random list of sciences, including medicine, engineering, veterinary medicine, agriculture, computer science, and oh yes, the occasional climate scientist as well. About a third, and the single largest category, about 10,000 people, have checked the general science category. So the notion that this 30,000 uh, number, which is a large number, and it sounds very, very impressive, when the, um, uh, the statistics are examined a little, it, be, it becomes a little less persuasive, um, particularly since there have been many um, complaints by scientists who have found their names on this list, but they themselves did not sign up for the list. Um, but at any event, even 30,000 scientists is a small fraction of the total number of people receiving degrees in science since approximately the 1970s, which would be the cohort that would be being sampled, shall we say. Uh, one calculation had it as three-tenths of one percent. So the idea that there is this huge groundswell of scientists opposing global warming is, to say the least, um, overstated. Another technique for questioning the science that you find in both creation, uh, the creationism issue and the global warming issue is cherry picking the data. Oops. It's a classic creationist technique. Find an apparent anomaly and thereby challenge evolution. Most of the young earth creationist arguments against the age of the earth, for example, are of, of this nature. This um, Jack Chick cartoon from the uh, cartoon book Primal Man talks about a lava flow in Hawaii that was dated through uh, potassium argon method as three billion years and yet it was recorded that this lava flowed in 1801 so clearly radioisotopic dating is worthless. Clearly if, if the earth is not old then evolution couldn't occur so if evolution didn't occur creationism occurs and we win. So hence goes the argument. 
find an anomalous uh, bit of information in the scientific literature and hold it up as disproving your opponent. Well, of course, if you actually look at this article that's cited in this comic book, you find that the authors are geologists who are looking, who are, shall we say, warning their fellow geologists who work in this area to be aware of contaminants that can show up in lava. Uh, these particular example here were, were is olivine xenoliths that appear in lava, but they come from far, far below the, the mantle, and so they throw the dates off. Uh, these are recognizable. They're, they're, they're sort of lumpy-looking uh, structures that you find in the lava. And what this article really is talking about is how to refine the techniques of radioisotopic dating. It's not calling into question the whole idea of, uh, of uh, radiometric dating, um, potassium, argon, or otherwise. Um, and, and the creationist data, as I, uh, creationist literature is chock full of this kind of thing. Uh, 